Hi, I'm John Griffin, Microscopy Imaging Officer at the Australian Cancer Research Foundation's Cancer Biology Imaging Facility at the Institute for Molecular Bioscience on the University of Queensland's St. Lucia campus. Welcome back to our tutorial series on microscopy and image processing. In this installment, we'll be looking at image histograms, how to read them and how to use them. To get started, we'll open up an image in ImageJ. I'm using an image of F-actin labeled with Alexafluor 488 phalloidin. If we go to the ImageJ menu and select Analyze and Histogram, a new window with a graph pops up in it. This is a histogram of the brightness values of the pixels in our image, and it's a fairly typical image histogram for images from the microscope. The vertical axis is the frequency, how many pixels there are, and the horizontal axis is the brightness level, how bright those pixels are. Thus, by using this diagram, we can see the distribution of brightness values in our image, that is, how many pixels there are at each brightness level in our image. Darker values are on the left, brighter values are on the right. The higher the graph is, the more pixels there are at that brightness. One thing we can notice immediately is that there appear to be two peaks in this histogram. There's a very tall, thin peak all the way to the left side of the histogram and a shorter, broader peak to the right of that. These two peaks represent two populations of pixels within our image. The background is the population at the far left, the darker pixels, while the broader peak to the right is the foreground. Notice that the peak in our background is not at zero. In fact, there are no pixels with a value of zero, and this is totally okay. It assures that we have not underexposed the image and thus thrown some of our data away. We can also see this if we look at the statistical measures below the graph. The minimum value is listed as 6. The value listed for the modal, most frequent value on the histogram, is 7. And that corresponds to our most populous value in the background. We can also see that our maximum value is at 230 out of 255. What this information tells us is that the dark parts of our image are not as dark as they could be, and that the bright parts of our image are not as bright as they could be. Again, this is totally okay, and it ensures that we haven't underexposed our image and thrown away Im information that way, and that we haven't overexposed our image and thrown information away that way. But wouldn't it be nice if we could make the bright parts brighter and the dark parts darker? so that we have the best contrast possible in our image? Well, we can. And now that we have some guidance from our histogram, we can do it without making parts of the image too dark or too bright. Again, we'll select our image window and make it active to be sure that we're working with that image in particular. Select Image, Adjust, Brightness and Contrast, and we've got a new dialog that pops up. Click on the set button, yet another dialog pops up and you'll see we can enter a value for the minimum displayed value. For the minimum displayed value, we'll enter our modal value to set our background to zero. So our modal value is seven, so we'll enter seven for the minimum displayed value. For the maximum displayed value, we'll enter our maximum, which will be 230. If we click OK, you can see already our image is brighter and we've got better contrast. Finally, if we return to our brightness and contrast dialog box, we'll click on Apply to apply those changes. And then finally, we'd want to 
save our image, but don't save over your original data. So we'll go to File, Save As, TIFF, and we'll call this green2, maybe underscore 2, and we'll save it. Now this procedure is called histogram stretching, and it's allowed by pretty much all journals, even those with the most stringent image processing guidelines. If you do it as we've shown you here, reviewers shouldn't call you on it, and they shouldn't complain because there's nothing to complain about. As always, leave questions, comments, and suggestions in the comments below, or if you work at the IMB, drop us an email or come up to level six for a chat. Thanks for watching.